What's up, everybody? Andre from CFX Films here, and welcome to part two of my modern UI menu tutorial in Unity 5. This video is going to have two different components in it. I'm going to be breaking down some of the Photoshopping aspects, so how I actually made the labels, because I actually got a request on part one to put this in this video, and I actually thought it was a great idea, so I am putting it in this video. And the other part is actually setting up the uh, the uh, settings panel with all the sub panels and sort of layering them and and setting the correct child objects so it all is set up properly. Part three is when we are going to be getting into the programming. So first thing I'm gonna start is by going into the Photoshop tutorial. So I'm gonna have the screen fade out and when it fades back in, uh, it's gonna be the Photoshop part. So uh, yeah, let's do that fade now. And welcome to the Photoshop section of this tutorial. I'm using Photoshop 2017. This is the latest version of Photoshop that's out right now. And uh, they changed the opening new document window a little bit. There's, there's a few changes, but this is the honestly the biggest first, uh, first change that you get. So I'm just going to set, uh, let's say, I'm going to make this 1,000, and I'm going to set the height to 400. So we're going to create this, and we're going to use the magic eraser tool, and we're just going to remove the background. So we have a blank background, which when we save this as a PNG file, it actually saves the alpha channel, which is what allows us to have transparency in our image. Here I have opened up a few of the UI examples that I actually have and imported into the Unity project. And as you can see here, these are not transparent. It's because I turned the uh, opacity amount to 100% on all the layers, so I can actually show you how I made it, and we're going to replicate it. So the first thing we're going to do is create this yellow outline. So I'm actually going to select the brush here, hold Alt, and then left click. So it's actually going to see it's going to save whatever color you have hovered over. So I'm going to choose the yellow. And in case you want to get the exact amounts that I have here, here are the uh, uh, the color code values. We're going to go into Entitled, and we're going to click this tool right here. So we can select a specific area. And I'm going to select about there. I'm going to click and drag and drag it all the way down to, I'm just lining it up using using the uh, the grid they have there. All right, so now I have this, this inner square set selected. I'm going to right click, select inverse. So now it's actually selecting the outside. So I have here selected the, uh, just this, this hard edge brush. So this is the soft edge, this is the hard edge. Honestly, it doesn't make a big difference, but you just click and drag until you get all the elements of the corners. And there we go. Deselect. And now we got our edge. Hooray. And I like to have a separate layer. We're going to call this background. We're actually going to make sure that the, the outline is over top of the background. And I'm going to make sure it's black. We're going to put black. Actually, you know what? Let's make it gray. And then we're going to turn down its visibility to about 20% outline. We're going to keep that at 100. So this way, the button isn't just an outline when you import it into Unity. It actually has somewhat of a uh, defined solid space in it. It just looks transparent. So it gives it, it gives it that modern feel. And I actually have this detail right here, which, I mean, it's low quality, but this is this is... This is a big panel, and you can't really see it because it's usually uh, I usually have this at a very low opacity. But what it is is we're going to create a new layer called Details, and it's actually let's find the brush here. I believe it's which brush is it? Let's try 24. So 24 is just this sort of paint spatter, spatter, splatter, uh, and you can click, and it actually just kind of creates this sort of random looking edge and you can rotate it and actually just change and you can change the size of it um, to make it a little bit more random let's remove it and let's change its color i'm going to hold alt again click the yellow we're going to make this bigger let's click there click there and now i'm going to turn down its opacity to about nine percent and then when you save it you're going to click file save as and then you will uh, save it as a PNG file, and then you name this whatever you want. Let's do test UI. 
You save it, no compression, not interlaced, okay, and then you import it back into Unity. And that's really all it is, and that's how I made these panels. And I just created different resolutions, and I imported them into Unity, and Unity handled them really well. And that's really all there is to it, guys. So let's go back over to the Unity part of this tutorial. And welcome back. Thanks, Photoshopping Andre. So that was a quick Photoshop tutorial, but now we are back into the Unity side of things. And uh, these aren't the Photoshopping images that we just created, but these are some ones that I created a little while ago. And these are the same ones that I'm using here, as you can see. And these are the ones we're gonna work with. So honestly, because I am uploading the project here that I have, and it's gonna be available for download in the description, you can actually see what I did here and actually um, use it as a template and integrate it into your own games if you want to. Uh, and you can switch out these um, the uh, images that are used here, the source images, to whatever you want and change the colors, do whatever you want to make it look cool. The whole objective of, of why I'm making this video is so you can take what I'm teaching you and turn it into something better and even cooler. All right, so we are going to go into the settings panel and I'm actually going to break down how I made each element. So the way that this is broken up is by default, I have the game uh, button highlighted and then it actually is associated with this panel game right here So there's three different panels and whenever you don't want a panel to show up. You just have them uh, Disabled I don't know if I I said that in my last part But I'm gonna reinforce this since it's important and it's a very easy way to have objects Enable and disable or be active and inactive as uh, the new unity uh, The the coding language has been updated to use a is active uh, true and false rather than dot enabled uh, that was a that was a change that I had to make on a lot of my code thanks to unity 5 and I'm going to show you all the different subparts of this all right so I have just the corner bits here you can see just just corner details again raycast target has to be disabled key bindings is its own button and as you can see here, I actually have these all listed in a certain order. Honestly, this the order here does not make a huge difference, but let me actually give you an example of where it would. Watch me move this controls button. Oh, not game. Oh yeah, actually, yes, I will need game, and I will need uh, the uh, align effect. All right, so look closely here. and give you a more noticeable example. Let me make this bold so it shows up more. It's just for just temporary. All right, watch. Do you see how if you look closely, you can see that the texture is actually overlying over over top of the text, so it's overlaying it. So as I move it, you can see that the text is actually being covered by it. And I can make this even more visible by turning it up. All right, there you go. So see how it's actually covering it? Well, if I move it above it, you can see now it's behind it. So the Unity UI system is very smart and it organizes everything by layers. So anything that is uh, higher up in the hierarchy is further back and the further down you go, it moves it to the front. So if you move it all the way down to the front, it's going to appear in front of everything else. And this is an important concept to remember because that is how you can be clever in, in uh, uh, highlighting effects and just having everything organized. So take a look at this, where I have the normal button, which is under my game panel. I have normal line, which is the line effect, and it is over top of my normal effect. But if I really wanted to, I can move this behind it and then the effect isn't highlighted, so the text doesn't change any color, and it's behind it. Honestly, it doesn't make a huge difference in this case, but you can see why it would in certain cases. I mean, even, even the slider. If I move the fill area to behind the background, now the background object is in front of it, and you can't see the fill slider, which, you know, that's not right at all, but that's just an example, a practical example of why you would want to be mindful of what layer you're actually placing your... Uh, your UI on. So let me actually reload this scene since I kind of messed it up. And this is just a series of texts that are all lined up. Uh, make sure that if you actually click T on your keyboard, it will uh, load up the Unity 2D tools, which you have these four blue dots on the corner, and then you have this single the the center anchor point. And this is how you can actually line up your objects um, and have them lined up pixel perfect by holding Shift and then dragging it 
uh, whatever direction you want. So it locks it in the X axis or the Y axis. And by, hold, by pressing Control D, you can duplicate it, hold Shift, drag it down, and then it lines it up. And that's how I actually lined up everything. And then I would just rename it all and then reorganize it underneath uh, whatever I wanted it to be called. I mean, here I even, I just called it uh, text one, two. I uh, see, I didn't even label these things because they didn't need to be. And honestly, I mean, you could organize this better, but the reason why I didn't is just because I'm not calling them through any code. And I have to call these buttons, especially normal line and hardcore line in the, the code. So I can actually reference it case sensitive by its object name. And uh, that just makes it easier for me to work with. And the way that I've programmed this and set this up, which you will see in the next video is, uh, where is it? Is uh, uh, because of that. Where is the code? I don't even know where the code is being placed. Did I put it on? Oh, that's interesting. Yeah, no, I actually did play. Okay, check music volume. Yeah, I don't even know where I put the code on, but I probably just called it by the by the script because you don't actually have to have it uh, running off of an object. You can have it just running off of a script in the project view. So that's actually how I set up this panel. And honestly, that's all there is to it. The controls panel, as you press the buttons, the other ones disable. And that is what makes them actually appear like they're being highlighted. See, I have line controls, and then I have line video. And I also have line key bindings. It actually enables the uh, the highlight effects um, through script. And it actually, sorry, is active, true, and false, not dot enabled. Just reinforcing that again. All right, so guys. That is it for this video. This is sort of the preliminary to setting up the uh, coding segment, which is the most important part, which we will be doing in the next video. So I'll be breaking down the functions and how I actually made it. And uh, I did it in JavaScript. So you can convert it to C Sharp very easily because when you're using basic functions and not really any advanced methods, uh, it's really easy to convert between the two languages and Unity makes it a breeze. So thanks for watching guys, and I'll see you in the next video where we finish this menu.